Periods are still viewed as uh, something dirty or unholy and that bothers me. Stop assuming and stop blaming the religion. If you don't know what it was for, I don't, I'm not gonna allow you to come and say, oh, in Hindu religion, women are not allowed to go inside the temple. Oh, women are not allowed to touch anybody. Oh, women cannot do, oh, I hate that. Christianity is so cool. After all, back in the day, women were expected to do all the household chores, cook, clean, take care of everyone, right? So maybe this was their way of saying, hey, I need a break. And at one point after like an intercourse, I even had a lump of cotton residue that came out of my vijayjay. Hi everyone. Mm -mm. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, you guys. How are you all doing? You know me, do you? But my name is Rinima Bora. And um, first off, I really want to say a big, gigantic, enormous, magnificent thank you for all the love and support on our first episode of All Things Women, where we talked about women's sex drive. It's been amazing to, to see the conversation it sparked, and I'm just so glad we are building this community together because it's about time. Today we are diving into episode two and we are talking about something that's just as important, but often just as taboo, periods chums, menstruation. Honestly, discussing these topics isn't always comfortable for me, but I feel like someone has to do it. And if someone had spoken to me openly about these things when I was younger, I feel like I might have made different choices. Like I would have skipped tampons altogether and I would have gone straight to menstrual cups, which I use now. So consider this, my way of being a torchbearer, guiding you through the things I have learned the hard way so you don't have to. So let's get into it. Of course, I'm gonna begin with my own experience, right? Um, I got my first periods in, uh, when I was in seventh grade, just 13 years old. Just imagine, guys, 13. But then periods were almost, almost a non-event for me. I had no pain, no cramps, and life went on as usual. I played sports, I attended school. I never felt the need of uh, you know, taking a day off, but things started to change, of course, as I got older. Uh, I remember in my late 20s, I began um, experiencing fatigue, cramps, and back pain. It wasn't debilitating, but it was noticeable, right? And then when I hit my 30s, periods became much more challenging. The first and second days often left me like non-functional. I'm talking about not being able to get out of my bed. The cravings hit hard, like especially for sweets, chocolates, and the mood swings. Let's just say they are real. My husband should talk about that, honestly. <laughs> but, you know, it's fascinating and also a bit daunting how periods kind of change as we age. Like in your teens, they might be light and easy. But as you move into your 20s and 30s, the symptoms do intensify. And I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to educate you. Cramps, fatigue, and emotional fluctuations became more common. I'm now in my mid-30s. I'm 35, and I have no idea what's in store for me, honestly, in my 40s and 50s, uh, except, of course, uh, the eventual onset of menopause. Speaking of which, uh, I think it's another phase that brings its own set of challenges, and um, I'm not there yet. While I'm not there yet, I feel like it's important to understand that Menopause is a natural transition, uh, typically occurring between 45 and 55 years of age. We will definitely talk more about that in future episodes when I get there. But for now, let's focus on managing periods. Now, my experience with menstrual products, like I want to talk about the different menstrual products that I have used over the years and my experiences with each one of them, right? When I started charming at 13, uh, like most girls, I was introduced to sanitary pads by my mom, my older sister, my cousins, uh, sisters and all of it. And I used them for a good five to six years. But when I moved to Bangalore at the age of 16, I realized sanitary pads weren't the best fit for my lifestyle. So I switched to tampons. Now tampons were convenient for me at the time because especially because I preferred wearing thongs as my underwear to avoid panty lines under tight clothes. I just don't like that, but each to its own. But after a few years, I definitely started experiencing issues. On, a, on lighter days, the tampon wouldn't fully soak, right, on 4th, 5th, and 6th day. And when I would take it out, I noticed that dry cotton residues were left behind. And this led to an unpleasant, like, fishy odor. And at one point, after, like, an intercourse, I even had a lump of cotton residue that came out of my vijayjay. And that's when I was like, dude, I realized the tampons might not be, like, the safest option, you know? And then I did some research, I switched to menstrual cups. It wasn't an easy transition, but the first few months were a struggle with menstrual cups, leaking, figuring out what's the right size, learning how to insert it properly. It took time, good five to six months. But now I use a smaller cup size for my lighter days, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh, and a large one for heavier days, first, second, and third, and it works 
beautifully. If you are considering a switch, there are great brands available on Nike, Amazon, so you can pick anything up. Now let's talk about something um, that's often whispered about sex during periods. For some, it's not a big deal and even enjoyable, while for others like me, it's something that's just not on the table, guys. Personally, I find it grossing to have sex during my periods. And again, like I said, I'm not judging anybody each to your own. I prefer to have my seven days of break to rest and let my body do its thing. Scientifically, though, there is no harm in having sex during your periods. In fact, some studies suggest that it can help alleviate cramps because orgasms release endorphins, which are natural painkillers. So go have sex. <laughs> However, the risk of infection can be slightly higher during this time, so if you are comfortable with it, just make sure to maintain hygiene. For me, though, off the table, guys. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's all about personal preference, right? Um, what works for you and your partner is your choice and your decision. Don't let anybody tell you any other way. Now, in many cultures, including mine, periods are still viewed as uh, something dirty or unholy, and that bothers me. But that couldn't be further from the truth, right? Periods are a natural process that prepares a woman's body for pregnancy. Without periods, human life wouldn't even be possible. None of you will exist today. But specifically in my Hindu culture, there is a tradition that women should not pray or enter temples during their periods, those seven days. And I know that this can raise a lot of questions and eyebrows, especially when compared to other religions like Christianity or Islam, where, where or Buddhism or whatever, where such restrictions aren't maybe as prevalent. But here is the thing, ladies and gentlemen, this practice in Hinduism is rooted is in ancient Vedic traditions. It is believed that during menstruation, a woman's body is going through a significant purification process, which is true. And it's a time for rest and recuperation. So the practice of not praying or entering temples is seen as a way to allow women to focus on their own well-being without added spiritual responsibilities. So stop assuming and stop blaming the religion. If you don't know what it was for, I don't, I'm not going to allow you to come and say, oh, in Hindu religion, women are not allowed to go inside the temple. Oh, women are not allowed to touch anybody. Oh, women cannot do, oh, I hate that. Christianity is so cool. You know what irks me is that you don't take the time to spiritually understand why a religion is the way it is. Can you imagine Hindu religion has gone to the point of saying that you need rest. So rest for those seven days. You don't have to pray. You don't have to cook. You don't have to do anything. Just rest. How beautiful is it? Right? Okay, I'm sorry for the outburst. I'm not here to question these traditions. Honestly, I believe in our culture and I follow it deeply. You can do what you want. Our ancestors, ladies, went through a lot to establish these practices and there's wisdom behind them, right? It's about respecting the natural processes our bodies go through and understanding that there is a time for everything. Let's respect that. Now, speaking of culture, I'm scared to open this Pandora's box, but let's touch on some specific practices related to periods in, in different parts of India, right? In some regions, when a girl gets her first period, it's celebrated like a mini marriage. I remember in my Assamese culture, when I got my first period, it was a big event. My parents invited everyone over, like everyone they could possibly invite. And it was not like I was a little bride without the groom. Of course, it might seem embarrassing to some of you, like a lot of youngsters today, but it's really a celebration celebration of coming of age, a success story of sorts, you know? It's about acknowledging that their little girl is now capable of becoming a mother whenever she's ready, and that's something to be proud of. Like, I'm proud of the fact that, you know, I can be a mom. But on the flip side, there are also practices where women are secluded during their periods. In some parts of India, a woman is asked to stay in a separate room, don't touch anybody, avoid going out for three days. Now again, this might sound so harsh, but if you think about it practically, it was probably, I'm guessing, it was, I'm not guessing, this is what spiritually it says, it was probably a way to ensure that women could rest, right? After all, back in the day, women were expected to do all the household chores, cook, clean, take care of everyone, right? So maybe this was their way of saying, hey, I need a break. So some smart lady, I'm guessing, back in the day would be like, there is a rule. And while it might not be practical in today's fast-paced world, where we have jobs and other commitments and we have to step out every single day, it's important to understand the intention behind these practices, right? Now, I am definitely not an expert, I'm not a doctor, but I want to share what's worked for me in managing my periods. First, listen to your body. If you need rest, take it. Cravings are natural. So don't beat yourself up if you, if you indulge a tad bit. Staying hydrated and eating a balanced diet helps manage the symptoms too. If you are using menstrual cups, don't get discouraged if the first few cycles are tricky. It takes time to find your rhythm with that one. But once you do, 
It's a game changer, I'm telling you. You are never gonna go back to anything else. And if you're still using pads or tampons, that's perfectly fine too, do what works best for you, but I will still say stay away from tampons. Now as we wrap up, ladies, and maybe some gentlemen out here, I want to encourage everyone watching, especially my dearest amazing women, to keep the conversations about periods open and honest. There is nothing dirty or shameful about them, ladies. They are a natural part of your lives, my life, and the more we talk about them, the more we can support each other, we can learn, we can avoid mistakes. And remember, just because we are influenced by the Western culture and we always wanna emulate it, doesn't mean we should dismiss our own traditions and practices. Our culture is rich and there is wisdom in the ways our ancestors did things. Let's embrace that while also finding what works best for us in today's world. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this episode of All Things Women, Periods, episode two. If you have any questions or you want to share your own experiences, please drop them in the comments below. And please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more discussions on women's health and empowerment. Until next time, take care and um, don't be ashamed of your periods. It's beautiful. And remember, all you 7 billion out there, none of you will be here if I don't chum. I mean, if your moms didn't chum. Bye, guys.